There are a lot of different people who enjoy Halo for their own various reasons. Therefore, everyone kind of has their own opinion of what Halo should be, and some opinions might not be the best, if not hot takes. <laughs> So I reached out to you guys on YouTube and over on Twitter as well to know what your Halo hot takes are. And as much as I would love to reply to every single one of your guys' hot takes, we'd be here all day. So if you guys like this type of videos and want to see another one, make sure to tap like, subscribe, and let's get right into those details. Oh, and stay tuned throughout the video because I have my own hot take within this video that I know is going to piss off a good portion of people because I'm spicy like that. Big Rob Energy says, any more resources used on Halo Infinite is a waste of time, money, and energy. They need to collectively all move on to the next title and make it legit. They had a chance with Infinite and blew it. Player base isn't going to grow, but they'll get another massive chance when the next title comes out. Well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. That's the tough situation right now with Halo Infinite because clearly 343 have moved on as they're not doing seasons anymore. We're just doing operations. I mean, 343 even stated in a live stream that even though they think Halo fits in the great spot, they have ambitions beyond infinite. But we all know that the next Halo title is going to be a few years away. So Microsoft and 343 look at this as like, we need to have something that's Halo related for people to jump into and enjoy. During that wait between Halo 5 and Halo Infinite, we had the Master Chief Collection come out on PC with some external extra goodies that we never expected to come with the MCC, which helped satiate that player base to give them something to do besides playing Halo 5 for six years. While I agree that I think all major Major resources need to go into the next Halo title to get that out as soon as possible because time is of the essence with this franchise right now. But I don't ever see 343 publicly coming out and saying we are moving completely away from Infinite. There are no more updates coming out until we have a prospect or something new and shiny to look at with the next Halo title coming out. Funky Reaper Cat says the Prometheans from Halo 4 are far more fun to fight than the Flood. <laughs> Say what? Bro, what are you smoking on? Cause I need some of that good stuff. Well, my initial reaction is you're just wrong, but how do I actually explain that? I have a feeling that maybe you or maybe a lot of people out there might be thinking of the Flood are kind of one dimensional enemy types that just kind of run at you the whole time going for melee attacks cause they're zombies, right? That's what they do. But the Flood are far much more interesting than your typical zombie enemy. The Flood are actually like a genius way of designing enemies because it's actually just reusing a lot of the assets that are already in the game, but combining them in a different way to make it really engaging and unique. Because what the Flood do is they take over all the organic forms. They got Johanna, Sanghealy, Jackals, Humans, and they all have their own weapon types as well and different attack patterns. And so then not only are you fighting against typically like Johanna, or the Covenant or something like that. You're fighting against all the bad guys, including the good guys' enemy weapons, all at the same time. So it's kind of like in a way to give the player a taste of their own medicine, which is such a unique flip of gameplay. Where the Prometheans were an interesting take, yeah, but I just don't really find them that enjoyable to play against. Like the crawler little guys, like they just run at you and try to melee you, shoot them one shot, easily killed right there. They're not like an annoying little pest that makes it so it's actually more difficult to play against. Like the little popcorn floodies, which their whole idea is like kind of make sure the player's constantly receiving damage. Therefore, it's much more difficult of a section to play through because your shields aren't able to recharge. Unlike with like the little crawlers, you kind of move away, you got no problem right there. My biggest issue with the Prometheans has to be the Knights and the little Watchers, even though they removed the Watchers in Halo 5, but like Halo 4, dude, like those Watcher guys were so annoying just because like they would just block any kind of grenades or any kind of damage or bring enemies back to life kind of thing or reanimate them in some kind of way. It was just super annoying to play against and there really wasn't much of a way to combat that because at least with the flood there, yeah, there is also reanimation, but if you melee the bodies and kind of disintegrate them, you can't reanimate that. So I felt like a lot of times with the Prometheans, not only do you have to kill them, but you kind of have to kill them again or focus on the one little annoying guy that's actually kind of hard to hit and the hitbox is kind of inconsistent. It's just not fun. Lucinity, fellow streamer, asks, Halo should be available on all platforms slash consoles. Making it available to everyone means more people in the playlist and not long wait times. Full communist, you heard that? She went full communist. Now, the reason why this can be considered a bit of a hot take is because people are very dedicated to their Xbox platform, right? They want to be able to justify why they invested that hundreds of dollars into this console and platform to then see something like Halo or a game, the reason why they bought that platform in the first place, move over to like Nintendo or Sony, 
makes them feel like they just kind of wasted their money because they dedicated themselves to the Xbox, possibly even alienating themselves from their friend group. Also, I feel like the console itself should provide enough of an experience to justify why you want it to be on that platform compared to any other ones, not having to rely on the games to make people want to get that platform. But yeah, I'll agree with that one. Halo should be on all platforms. Just get as many people as you can as possible in this. Duquesne 23 said Halo is a racing game first and a shooter second. What? Obviously you can probably just leave this up to Duquesne trolling because he is a 4G racetrack boy out there, but I honestly feel like Duquesne really does feel that Halo is first a racetrack game compared to a first person shooter. Like, haha, I've seen you do this joke for 10 years, but now I'm actually starting to believe that you actually think this is true. But Halo is actually kind of a sick racing game. Grunt.api, formerly Halo.api, said 343 will never endorse community developers. Ooh, that's a sub. I to take. If you guys don't know Halo slash Grunt dot API, they were the forefront of just add statistical information you could utilize within Halo while 343 were struggling to pick things up with that for Halo Infinite that he was actually just taking the forefront and actually just making really awesome stuff for the Halo community to genuinely enjoy. But to say that they'll never endorse community developers, I think is kind of a tricky thing to say because I think a lot of it comes down to legality. And if 343's hands are tied because of Microsoft, we've seen different types of fan development done within the Halo franchise and 343 slash Microsoft kind of just let it happen pretty much as there have been multiple fan games that have been made utilizing Halo like aesthetic or gameplay or something like that and ultimately they allowed that to happen as long as they create their own assets they can utilize that stuff 343 won't exactly prop them up and be like hey check out this fun thing people are making but they're certainly not going to shut them down. We saw this happen recently with Modern Warfare 2 Remastered Community Mod where they actually took Call of Duty 4 Remastered and it remastered that in a way to make it into the modern for two multiplayer that everyone's wanted for the longest time that Activision and Call of Duty would just not give to people for whatever reason. But then they shut that down because it utilizes copyright and assets, right? It's a very legal gray area that might be something that the developers actually probably really like and want to help prop up. But legal teams like mm, we can't let that happen and 343 is currently utilizing community developers with the dig site project that's going on with the master chief collection it sucks grunt api deserve better but i think it's just it is what it is two quick ones says halo should retire for good and be accepted for its past greatness without further tarnishing its legacy man this just feels like when the halo community is down that bad where people are just like just, just stop. Kids, kids, you're both just awful. I'm sorry, but I just can't agree with this. Not only for myself being like, no, as a Halo YouTuber guy, but I think also just that there is such a unique experience to be had with Halo that like a lot of people just think like, what if Halo did what's popular right now kind of thing? Tried that with Halo 4, not that great a success, right? But we've seen a lot of people talk about potentially like a battle royale, how well that would work in with Halo. And the fact that Microsoft still has a hit within the gaming community. Now, yeah, things have been down bad recently, but the thing is that Halo is such a recognizable name. Everyone knows the franchise. Everyone has had a chance to play it. They made an idea for themselves if they like playing Halo or not. But it's so difficult in today's gaming uh, landscape to be able to make a franchise from scratch that just instantly resonates with people. That's why you see so many remakes and so many sequels out there. I just feel like Halo has been stuck in the past a little bit too long, but also trying to integrate trends that just don't really work for the franchise. Artist OTZ says, I don't think the Halo is dying videos all over YouTube are helping the series. I feel like if anything, it's just going to further drive people away from the Halo franchise. It's all well, I don't think you're wrong, as I do believe some of these YouTube videos uh, that we've seen pop up all over the place have pushed people away. It seems like the current trend right now is if you have 2,000 subscribers and you want to make a name for yourself, talk about how much Halo's fallen off, you get an instant 50,000 views. But also keep in mind that even though we have a very loud group of people here online who talk about Halo all the time, like myself, you see people with like 700,000, 500,000, 250,000 subscribers out there talking about Halo, you think, oh my God, these guys are the voice of the Halo community at large. But really, that's not the case. If you take all of the online community as a whole, 
that's still a fraction of what the entire population and community of ha interested Halo players really are. Now, do our voices tend to line up quite a bit with what the gaming community has to say? I would say yes. That's probably why these people you see out there with hundreds of thousands of subscribers out there have this type of following because whatever they say resonates with how people are feeling. But I would say there definitely is like a silent majority of players who will never go online or really even know that even 343 makes Halo. They just see Halo and they go, I like that. I want to play it. They've played the 343 Halo games are probably like, yeah, it's now for me. I'm sure many of you remember this tweet from 343 back in January 25th of 2022, saying that over 20 million people had played Halo, the biggest launch in Halo history. And everyone was just like, what are you talking about, dude? Because we all know about the Steam peak population of peak concurrent player count of 250,000-ish players playing at one time back at launch. And I believe at the time of that post, Halo Infinite was probably surfacing right around like 10th-ish kind of position when it comes to most played Xbox games. But we really have no idea how many people are actually on Xbox, but we do assume that the majority of the people who play Infinite are on that platform. And there are probably a lot of people who just don't go online and comment on things. Pete Plays Music says campaign and multiplayer should be separate and developed by two different studios, 343 and Searching Infinity, for example. Hey, that's pretty good. And I think this actually would make a whole lot of sense as it's a lot easier to make new things that are engaging for players in multiplayer, but it takes much longer to craft up something special when it comes to the campaign side of things. So why let campaign hold back a new multiplayer experience, if you know what I mean? And now we see this happen, especially with the Call of Duty franchise and a lot of other shooters out there who try to do their holy trinity of campaign, multiplayer, and third special mode. For example, with Call of Duty Black Ops 6 coming out, Raven Software was in charge of the campaign and Treyarch, the main developers of the Black Ops franchise, were pretty much in charge of the multiplayer and also the zombies, but they also have a ton of other support studios involved with every year making a new Call of Duty game. And if you want Halo to deliver on the same level of content as Call of Duty, you need that level of resources. We did see some development teams like The Coalition and some other external studios helping out Halo to get across that finish line, but nothing to the extent that we see like what's going on with Call of Duty, where it's a really hugely collaborative effort between multiple studios carrying huge weights within each franchise's uh, implementation. But honestly, I would love to actually see like a standalone free-to-play multiplayer version of Halo. I think that's definitely something that still could be attainable in some capacity with Halo. And then also have Halo campaigns either release as expansions to that platform. But now I just realized I'm explaining the platform idea of Halo Infinite. And at this point, I don't think anyone's really tied to 343 being the ones to make Halo. I think they're just like, whoever can make a good one at this point. Frog LMAO says, playable elites are essential. I believe this ties into my own personal hot <laughs> That being, playable elites are incredibly unessential and not needed at all within Halo. What did he say? One thing is that it's a minority group of player base that actually utilize the dinosaur. Just play any game on Master Chief Collection from Halo 2 to Halo Reach. How often do you actually play against someone playing as Elite? Maybe like 10, maybe 20% at best when it comes to a lobby. And for the amount of work and unique assets that need to go into making a customizable Elite model for just maybe 15% of the player base that actually utilize, feels like a gigantic waste of time because you're gonna want to have that parity between elite customization and Spartan customization because if you don't then people are just gonna gravitate to utilizing the Spartan customization anyways because you can look more unique and stand out more within the battlefield so for that reason alone I feel like elite should just can be completely cut out and also another reason I feel like it's a completely arbitrary addition to the gameplay that's not needed at all and actually if anything gets in the way of a smooth gaming experience playing online. But I think it's just like it has that inconsistency of character size, character model, and movement. It just doesn't line up to a consistent experience, which is one thing that's crucial for a multiplayer to have is wherever engage whatever engagement you get yourself into, you need to know like whatever moves you want put into it, you're not gonna be like cheated out of it because your head peeked over a ledge because they're smaller or something like that. Or the visual discrepancy that like the elite's heads are kind of like within their shoulders so you can, it's easier to miss where the head actually is in the middle of a gunfight. Though there is one exception to elites being playable within Halo and that's if you actually lean into the differences between those characters. Reach did actually a pretty good job of this where 
elites were actually much taller than Spartans. They moved a lot faster, they had unique maneuver sets as well. Even they had an entire game mode of invasion dedicated to elites versus Spartans. I loved that mode and I love how it plays in between these different races and so then you can have a bit of a rock paper scissors element when it comes to engagements which I thought was really fun. I feel like you're just being that guy who wants to be different and uses that as a personality trait because you force yourself to be so different than everybody else. Conform! No but really I just feel like playing against elites is kind of an arbitrary thing it's not really needed within the gameplay to make it a better experience to play. I want to know who the real ones are within this video right if you made it this far make sure you leave a green heart I'll make sure to like or at least reply to all the green hearts within the comments right here. If you have your own Halo hot takes, leave a hashtag hot takes within your comments so I can find it. Thank you all for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.